Hello and welcome to this third and hopefully final part of my uh, beginners tutorial for the Synthstrom Deluge. I'm going to move straight on from our, the end of our last video. So there are uh, two other videos if you haven't seen them, so check those out. Um, so what we're going to be going uh, to do now is we're going to be looking at swapping from the arranger playback to the song playback and vice versa. So at the moment my song button is flashing, so I'm in um, arranger view. I'll just play that. Okay, um, and if I change over to the song view whilst I'm playing the arranger, uh, you'll see what happens. Uh, you'll see which tracks are currently playing in the arranger. Uh, you'll see that the buttons in the song view are dimly lit. Uh, and you just look at the mute launch buttons to see which are green. Uh, you can also see the sequence playing back left to right on the various grid pads. Again, these will be dimly lit. So here we are in a range mode, I'm going to press play, look at the point, you won't see it for very long so it will, it will disappear out of sight pretty quickly. There it goes. So we're playing the intro at the moment, these are green, watch what happens when the arranger gets to the verse, there they go, all green. Now if I press any of these pads over here on the audition or mute launch columns, watch what happens. The dimly lit pads come up strong, come up bright, and then what happens is the song mode takes over, and whatever uh, section you're on, in this case it was the um, verse, that just loops round and round. Just stop that. And of course, if you press any of the pads on the main grid, uh, you'll be taken uh, to the track view for that track, and the arranger playback will continue to the end unless you stop it. So let's just go back and show you that. So we're going to be in arranger uh, view, going to press play, going to go to song view, and without uh, touching any of the mute launch or audition section pads, we'll press one of the pads in the row, and that'll take us uh, to that track, but the arranger uh, playback will still continue. So here we go. So arranger view. Okay, song view. Now if I press this uh, row here, you can see the drum track that we made first of all. We're still in arranger playback as you'll hear. Just let it run. Let's see, and it stopped. So uh, because we started off in arranger view playing, that kind of um, controls everything until you press stop and, you know, Want to change things now say you're in song playback uh, and a track or a section is looping around and you want to go to the arranger and play that instead simply go to the arranger while the song is playing scroll to the position you want playback to start from hold down left right knob and play and arrange your playback will start as soon as the current loop has finished in song playback i mean what i'll do is i'll try and scroll to this second group of pink pads um, so basically, I'm going to jump to this position here in the arranger as soon as I can from the song mode. So I'm in song mode, playing, I can turn this down a bit. So play, go to arranger, scroll, there, press the left right button and play. Now it jumps out as soon as the loop's finished, see? And we'll stop. So it's a good way of, you know, jumping to a, a, a place in the arranger quickly. Uh, you might be in song mode, you might be sort of looping around and, you know, playing different sections. And then you think, oh, I, I want the end part now. Jump to arranger, uh, scroll to wherever you want, press the left, right button down uh, and the play button. And then as soon as the current loop is finished in the song mode, it will jump to that place in the arranger so it's a bit complicated it took me a while to get my head around it but it, it does work really well let's try and understand this track view a bit better now uh, whatever tail pad you press when you're in the uh, arranger view okay uh, will take you to the track associated with that section as an example in our arrangement if you press a tail pad on the electric piano row so uh, that's here okay uh, and, you're, and you're in the pink section the verse you'll be taken to the electric piano track for the verse. So let's do that. Let's run the arranger, okay? Well, actually, I don't even have to run it. I can just go straight to it. So I've pressed this pad here. 
Now I'm going to hear. You can hear that it's the verse pattern for the electric piano. Go back to arranger. If I press uh, one of these blue dimly lit pads in the arranger view for the electric piano, I'll be taken to the track view for that part, which is the intro, which is the straight C major, F major, you might remember. Let's do that. See? Straight C and F. So it's a good way of you know getting to the track you want pretty quickly. So here's what determines what you hear and see in track view when you go into it from either arrangement or song view. If you go to it from arrangement view and you press play, you'll hear the arrangement from the nearest brightly lit button to the left until the end. So in our example, uh, let's go into arrangement view. Uh, in our example, if in arrangement view you press the sixth pad along and you then go to track view and press play, you'll hear the arrangement from bar five until the end. So let's just try that. So there's the sixth pad. So I, when I go to the track view, I should hear from uh, the, the arrangement from here. And press play. So it's gone from that first pink pad, and go to the end and stop. See, let's go back to arrangement. Uh, so if I was to go from um, I don't know, say the second uh, pad on the blue section, it will play from the beginning of the blue section to the end if I go back to the uh, track. So I press this one, go to track, press play, and it's gone from the beginning and it will go through to the end. Okay, so again, it takes a little bit of time to get your head around this, but once you do, you can get to where you want to quickly and start editing. Um, or if you're you know, doing a, a live gig, you can get to the bit you want quickly if you master these skills. So whatever is muted or soloed in the arranger will be reflected in your track playback. So if you want to just hear the track you're working on, make sure you solo it by pressing down on the left right knob and then pressing the mute launch. So let's try that. Uh, arranger, let's say I want to hear the synth bass solo when I go to the track. So if I press down on the left right button, and press the green uh, mute launch uh, pad for this synth bass row like that. Okay, if I press this pad here, uh, it's going to take me to the uh, track, uh, it'll be the uh, intro track for the bass. And if I press play, because it was soloed in the arranger view, see here, this blue pad means it's soloed. It's soloed when I go to the track view. Again, sometimes you want to hear a track solo, you don't want all the clutter of the other instruments, so that's a good way of doing it. If on the other hand you enter track view from the song view, let's go to song view, uh, actually we'll just go back to track view and, and unsolo that. Press down, press it again. So I'm in song view. Uh, so if you go to the track view from the song view, you'll hear whatever is currently looping in the song view when you press play in the track view. So uh, let's say for sake of argument, um, I'll press one of these pads so that the intro is looping. So if I press the electric piano row, one of the pads on there, see, this is looping in there. And of course I could solo that as well if I wanted to. Had to wait to the end of the bar, don't forget. But if I go to it, There it is. Obviously it's more than one bar, so I'm not seeing the whole thing. There's a good example where I might want to zoom out and see the whole pattern. So if I go to uh, fourths, I'm going to see the whole pattern. Each pad will represent one crotchet. And we're seeing that because in the song view, that is playing and it's soloed, you see? Go back, stop, and we'll just unsolo that electric piano. So again, it's so all this it's kind of boring, I know, but it's it really helps in your workflow. If you're sort of faffing about trying to find where you are, that destroys the, the creativity, which definitely does for me anyway. Now if you don't first press a row in song view and you press track, you'll go to the last track you were viewing. Uh, so if I don't press any any pads in this song view and press track, 
what I'm seeing there is the last track I was looking at, which is the electric piano, because we're hearing the whole lot now, because I unsoloed it. So that's that. A little bit complicated. Take your time learning that. Like I say, it took me a while, but it's definitely worth it. Right, next section we're going to deal with is getting deeper into the arranger view with white tracks. When I first looked at this in the manual, I was a bit confused, but again, persevere with it. Trust me, it's really worth the time taken to sort it out. Let's say you want to put a drum break at the end of bar 12. In a range of view with a resolution of one bar, to show you that, there is one bar. Uh, hold down shift and press pad uh, 12. Uh, this pad now turns from pink to white. Uh, press any of the tail pads to the right of this pad and you'll be taken to the drum pattern. There it is. Now we're going to change the end of this pattern so that you have a drum break. Change the resolution to 16th. So there we go, 16th, by holding down the left right knob, turning to the right. We're now going to uh, dial the left right knob uh, to the right uh, until 4 1 appears in the display. So 2 1, 3 1, 4 1. Now we're looking at the last bar. Okay, um, the last bar of that four bar pattern. At this moment, this is the unchanged verse drum pattern. Do you remember, we cloned the drum pattern and, and changed it. This is the fourth bar of that pattern. Uh, now, if you only want to hear this bar, press down on the left right knob uh, and then play. Uh, otherwise, the four bars will play through from the beginning each time. So let's just do that. OK, so that's that last bar playing. Remember, it stops because we're in a ranger mode. What I want to do here is to put some hand claps in, uh, but I've got to remember to press the cross screen button because if I put hand claps in in this bar, okay, um, bar uh, four, uh, I'll have hand claps in all the other bars. So I've turned the cross screen off. I'm going to put those claps in. Press down on the left right button and press play. And that's uh, changed. And also I'm just going to erase these uh, uh, bass drum, snare drum, hi-hats on the end of that, so hear that. Obviously you can still hear the, the piano and the bass in the background. There's better ways of doing this, I mean probably easier to record it in real time. Now if you go to song view, like this, you see you've still only got uh, six tracks because that uh, new track that I've made in Arranger, this one here, uh, doesn't appear is not in the song view yet okay um, so we're going to actually make that into a track that will appear in the song view and this is how we do it I'm going to hold it down this white pad here where the, this new track begins uh, I'm going to press song okay and then I'm going to press song again and now we've got the proper track our white pad has turned to uh, yellow um, and there is a slight bug here. It's made another um, four pads here. It's, it's, it's sort of elongated. It's not quite sure why. I'm just going to lose that. So now we've got a proper pad there, proper yellow pad. This is a proper track. And if I go to song view um, and I scroll, now you can see it's put this extra uh, row in here, this extra track, and it's lit up yellow. So I know it's this new one. If I go back to uh, the arrangement, there it is yellow. So I don't really want that one there, so I want to move that. So I'm going to hold any pad down on that track, on that row, and I'm going to scroll down until it appears at the bottom, like, like that. Now if I go back up, one, two, three, four, five, six, and here's our seventh, our seventh, our new track lit up in yellow. Okay? Uh, and I could have positioned that earlier by, you know, when I pressed song and song again, when I pressed song the first time, I was in the song mode and I could have scrolled with the left, right uh, knob and I could have dropped it wherever I wanted, but I've you know, just chosen to do it this way. So just to be clear, this new track is the ultra drum track that you've just been working on. And this, of course, can be used later on in the arrangement as needed. So you now have three sections with three different colours. It might be a good idea to create white sections uh, here and here, okay, on the other two tracks and erase the second half to the fourth bar so that the drum break has nothing else behind it. So let's hold the shift button down, turn this pad white and this one white. So these are new tracks now. Um, 
I'm going to go to this track. Be very careful of this cross screen thing. Turn it off. Now take out the end of that bar. We should have no bass behind our hand clap. But I've still got the piano, so I'll go back to a range, a range of view. Uh, press one of these tail pads in the piano. And again, let's just watch it. Cross screens come on again, so watch out for that. So I'm going to take out. That's cool. So listen now, now sh our hand clap should be all on its own. Okay, at this point, let's save. So press save. Uh, it's saying 5B. Okay, I'll save to 5B. That's a new save. So I've still got 5A and 5 if I want them. Press save again. So everything is now on 5B. Uh, now then, let's just go back to the range of view and just play, play from the beginning, play it through. Uh, oh, let's make new tracks, by the way, for these. So hold the synth bass white pad down. Uh, press song and song again. And do the same here. Song and song again. Now those are turned yellow. Go to the song. Uh, now again, I haven't got them where I want them, so I'm going to move them down. Um, let's just find out which which one this one is. Uh, that's the synth bass, right? So I'm going to get hold of that. Uh, so it's this yellow one here. Press the pad. Scroll down. So it's below that one and now this one is going to be the electric piano with the end missing see these uh, lights gone out so we know it's like a blank bit at the end of that so press any pad scroll down and put it underneath and that's it so now our and so, that, so now our three new uh, tracks with the break in yellow and they're at the bottom there so basically we've got our uh, intro in blue our verse in pink and our it's the verse isn't it but with the break at the end is in yellow so we've got three different sections there which is pretty cool let's create a special white track which we can record straight into this is great for overlaying a track without all the constraints of the earlier methods and it's brilliant for adding solos or you know crash cymbals or something so we're going to go to the range of view there it is Okay, uh, again, we've got those extra uh, bars there. I don't know what. I'm not quite sure. It might be something I'm doing wrong. I'm just going to get rid of those just by attaching them. So we've still got, still got our uh, 12 bars. And this is the break on the end of the, of the uh, 12th bar. Um, and we're going to press the audition section pad on the right of the next unused track. So track four. This, this track's not been used yet. So hold it down. And we're going to choose a sound for this new track. So, so it's on, I think that's single bass at the moment. We can scroll through. And I happen to know that 17, 17 is a nice sound for lead. Uh, it's called Impact Saw Lead. Make sure the resolution is set at one bar, which it is. And we're going to introduce this track towards the end of the intro and continue until after the verse. So on the grid pad, uh, fourth row down hold down the pad just to the left of the pink pa pink pad so here's the pink pad just the left and on this new fourth row uh, hold that down and then like that and then press the another pad just after the end of what you have so far so there now you can see um, this new track is being created here is white so it doesn't exist in the song view as yet so it's going to start just before the verse and it's going to end just after. Just in case, I mean, I may not play anything in this in this area here. I may just wait until the, the verse kicks in, but I might want to do a little run up into it. Okay, so in other words, uh, our new track is going to run from pad 4 until 13 in this particular resolution. Now, if you press one of the dimly lit tail pads in this track, you'll go straight to the track view for that. There's nothing in it. Um, because I haven't recorded, but you can see all these pads lit up white, and I call this the wall of white, and you'll see why in a minute. Remember, this track doesn't exist in the song view yet, but it will do in a while. So in track view, you can see that you have the first 10 columns unlit, and the remaining six are dimly lit in white. 
This tells you that you had 10 bars to record this track, our lead track, and Deluge will drop us in and out of record for those 10 bars. And now you can record some notes using the audition section pads on the right. So, I mean, I could go to keyboard mode uh, and, and play it in that way, uh, but I'm just gonna keep it simple and just use a few notes over here uh, with the major scale uh, uh, selected. I, I can't really go far wrong. Um, it's pretty limiting just using these these pads, but we'll do for the moment. Uh, if you press play, you'll hear the 10 bars. There's no need to scroll back to the beginning or anything. It'll just go from where it was. So uh, let's just press play. See, it starts straight away. And it'll go. Keep going. It's getting near the end of your section, your new section, and you heard, and it stops, you see, so you know you've got that area there to record, it's like a visual uh, idea of how long you've got to make your recording in, so while that uh, song program is going across here, you know you can play, so you know when you've reached this wall of white, you'll no longer be recording and that uh, won't be going into the deluge. So you can rehearse what you're going to play without recording. Press play and try out some notes that will work with the audition uh, section pads. Uh, remember you have a bar before the first starts. Remember we put that pad, uh, we put it just before. So you could use that as a kind of a, like a, a counting. Um, let's go back to our track view. So, so let's just rehearse a little thing here. Something like that. It's not not stunning, I know, but it, it will get something into that uh, new track for you. And and I am actually using real time recording for the first time. I'm actually just playing it, uh, and it's going to be quantized. I think it defaults to thirty seconds. You can change that if you want, but that will be fine. So I'm pretty happy. I'm going to start on this uh, E three note, and I'm just I am going to use that first bar as a counting. Uh, so I'm going to have to press record. So that lights, okay, and then play, and uh, then, I'm, then I will be recording what I'm doing. Keep an eye on the wall of white. And press record again, and press play. And we can hear our handiwork. Now, this is what I played. Obviously, you're not seeing the full thing because it's condensed down. If I uh, change the resolution um, to sixteenths. Okay, so I've changed the resolution to 16th and I've got it to where it's, um, I played the first few notes, so watch this. This is what I played. Let's just change the resolution back to one bar. Um, and that's fine. So we've got our new track and that's a great way of just tracking a solo over it. Now if you're happy with what you recorded, press song to go back to the range of view. Okay, uh, so this is our track here. It's still in white because it's not a proper track in the song view. So as before, you can turn this white track into a color track in song view. So let's do that. Let's hold this uh, first pad down, press song. Now this time, let's scroll and see if we can drop this to where we want it. Um, uh, like that. Now, there it is. This is our new track and it's another colour. It's blue. If I scroll up, um, well, it's actually used that same colour. So it would be grouped with these three. So I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is going to change that. Now the way I, I change that is I press shift 
and this pad until I get a different color. So the color has not been used, right? This green hasn't been used, so it'll be completely on its own. It'll be in a section all on its own. Okay, and if we go to, back to a range of view, there it is in green. That's our new track. So our top track is our drums. Second track in a range of view is the synth bass. Third track is uh, the electric piano, and this new track we've just done is the solo. And drums, synth bass, Rhodes, and the synth lead. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, I mean, it's quite exciting when you get these things and you learn these uh, wonderful things about them. That's the, the great thing about this machine. There's so much to learn. Like I said at the beginning of my first tutorial, we're scratching the surface here, but it's really good fun. Just the learning process, I think, is good fun. Uh, even before you get to the, you know, the making music, which obviously is the ultimate goal. And obviously, if you look at this in the song view, I mean, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, I'll just press play. Yeah, as you can see it, but you know, you, you probably wouldn't uh, bring this in and out uh, in the song view as it is. But you know, that's something you could experiment with. It's essentially for use in this arranged view. Very near the end now. Um, Final thing here, recording your song performance into the arranger. This is something new, I think, in 2.1. If you're familiar with Ableton Live, this is like recording what you're doing clip view into its linear arrangement. Basically, on Deluge, what we're going to do here is to put the device into song mode. Let's do that. And everything you will do will be recorded into the arranger. Here's how it works. First of all, in the arranger view, <laughs> let's go back to that, uh, make sure you're at the position where you want to start recording. If you have material visible on the timeline, where well, we have got all this that we've done, it will be erased by this procedure, so be really careful with this. So scroll past that, so we'll just do, we'll do that, and scroll past that. Let's go to, oh, let's go way past it, so we're, as far as we can go to 14, there we go. So we've got, a blank bit here we can record into. Um, obviously, if the arrangement is empty, just make sure you're at the start. But if you go into this procedure from here, all this will be erased. So we don't want that. So let's get rid of that. Um, then go back to song view, press record and song. So this button and this button uh, so that they flash. And then everything you do in the song mode will be recorded uh, in the arrangement view. Uh, you can alter parameters, you know, while you're doing this. Um, I haven't dealt with that, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just basically going to do this quick recording. So here we go, I'm going to press record and song. Both flash. So this is playing and it will get recorded for as long as I let it loop. So I'm going to change to the pink section, which is the verse, after this. Here it comes. Yellow section, and then the green. Which, of course, is just the solo. So I'll stop that. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to put the solo in there. But if we go to our arrangement view now and scroll back. Uh, we can see, we actually didn't even need to scroll back, it's actually set there. If I press down here with the left right button, press play, it will play back what I've just performed in the song mode, in the song view. So I let it go for eight bars, you remember the blue section. Then we have the pink section for four bars. yellow section for four bars. And then we had our solo all on its own, this green pad here, uh, which comes in here. That was a bit silly, wasn't it? And of course, you know, I messed up there, so I'm just going to press undo and that's gone. That's just all I've got is my original 12 bars. But again, very powerful feature, brilliant for assembling an arrangement really quickly. And you don't have to do any of this pressing pads. It's all done uh, automatically by what you do in the song view. So that's brilliant, isn't it? And of course, if you get lost, you can always reload your song in from where you uh, saved last, as long as you save regularly. So anyway, 
that's it for this tutorial uh, there are very many other videos out there on YouTube for you to watch and learn some of the more advanced aspects of the deluge I haven't touched on any of the effects or the um, synth parameters uh, the arpeggiator all this stuff with CV and gate you know there's sampling to think about I mean crazy amount of things and it's wonderful of course that they put all this in one box um, I think it was uh, Red Means recording Jeremy Blake was saying, you know, a lot of companies will put some things in one box, some things in another box, so you buy both. With Synthstrom Audible, the uh, company that have developed this, they put everything into this, so it's, you know, it's a one box solution. Amazing. So once you've mastered everything I've shown you in this video, I encourage you to go on and learn more and more about this amazing instrument so that you can get the very best out of it and make some wonderful music with it. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and the other two that I've done, uh, please uh, give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel, which is Daddy Long Les. Um, if you do have any questions, by all means, get in touch with me. All the best with your music making.